So let's get down to brass tacks here. So here is the uh, Unified Dream Machine Beacon. I'm actually going to bring up the uh, website for this real quick. Um, we'll take a look at that. Dream Machine Beacon. And uh, let's see if I can switch views here. We'll see if we can get this site to load. This is the actual uh, Ubiquity site. And let's see. I don't need free shipping. All right. So here are the specs on the Unify AP uh, Beacon HD. What's the name? Even seems to be a little bit different. By the way, I want to thank Ubiquity for sending this over to me. Uh, they did send this over so that I could show this to you. I did not buy this. This was provided by Ubiquity. So it is an 802.11 AC Wave 2 4x4 Moo Mimo. 300 megs of performance over a wireless mesh hop. Works with a Unify AP or a Dream Machine. It can be automatically discovered uh, for adoption by the Unify controller. MSRP is 129 USDs on this. And so um, this morning I was having just a couple issues. Uh, this computer only gets uh, turned on when I'm live stream streaming. I'm going to have to add it to my uh, list to fire this machine up and do Windows updates occasionally because uh, there were some updates and it. And so my browser didn't want to work right with the um the Unify site, so I went in and I did a, a, a WAN local uh, port on there um, and connected to my UDM directly on its web interface so that we, or on its WAN interface so that we can do this. But let's take a look at this uh, spec sheet real quick. By the way, the new data sheets are, uh, they're looking pretty good. So um, this is the application diagram with the UDM only. Now, once we get this out of the uh, box, you're going to notice uh, that it does take up an entire, um, entire plugin. So, uh, and I don't have the plugin here uh, to plug it in. Oh, actually, I've got one on the other side of the room. So, actually, I, I will, and I'll take a picture after I plug it in and post it on social media. Um, but uh, you can take a look at this. It's it's really supposed to be plug and play. So um, that's what we are going to try to do. So here it is uh, in all of its glory. This is the Unified Dream Machine Beacon. Very, very thin uh, box. So we'll go ahead and open it here. Nothing special about the inside of the box there. By the way, you know I'm... Uh, obsessed with making sure that I keep the boxes for all of this stuff. So if you ever get uh, gear from me, you will notice that uh, it all has the original box. So inside the box, we get this QSG card. It's got the, uh, the uh, QR code there to get the um, <laughs> to get the QSG. Sorry, I haven't had enough coffee. Nothing else really special about the packaging there. And then we do get this, uh, these like rubber feet that can be uh, placed. You can see this has already got some rubber feet here. And uh, this is the actual unit itself. So it's pretty low profile. Looks like a big um, Apple Magic Mouse, right? <laughs> big single button Apple Magic Mouse. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, ubiquity. I want a big Apple. Uh, magic mouse this size. You know what? No, I don't have a magic mouse laying around here. I was going to say, if I had a magic mouse, I could actually show you a comparison. But anybody who uses a Mac, and I saw Quick Tech Solutions, Tony, he uses a Mac. Tony, does this not look like a huge Apple magic mouse? Um, so then you can see we've got our kind of standard plug here, and then we've got this, uh, we've got some tape. So let me, and this is never, the, the protection tape on this has never been taken off. So let's uh, peel it off and let's see if I can get it in the mic. I don't know if you could hear that or not. It was semi-satisfying, not wholly satisfying. But uh, I'm going to take this over and I'm going to see if I can move the webcam as long as you all promise not to judge my office while it's in flux. And I will uh, 
Uh, see, maybe not. I got a pile of phones and stuff over there, but I am going to go right over here and I am going to plug this into the wall and then maybe I'll see, I'll, I'll point the camera over there. We'll see. Let me go, um, let me go plug this in real quick. Talk amongst yourselves in the comments. This should just take a few seconds. If you hear me fall and lots of noise, I'll, uh, I'll eventually be okay. All right, so the uh, the U the it's in. Let me see if I can move this camera right. I said no judging, no judging. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, the uh, the autofocus on this is horrible. You can see it down there, plugged in, uh, and it's still it was booting, and um, it had a white ring. Not sure what happened to it. Uh, oh, here. There, you can see it booting down there. Um, so it should, when it is ready for adoption, it should, I would assume, be solid white. So we're going to give it uh, a few a few minutes. and see, Okay, it's, uh, no, I thought it was solid white. This thing is trolling me on a Saturday morning. So and it's 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 so it's a magic mouse that takes up you do lose the entire uh, plug in. It would be nice to see one of these that has a pass through plug in, but other than that, I think you get into all kinds of other safety issues and certification issues and and stuff like that. Um, yeah, James, that is a lovely uh, GXP phone there, isn't it? Um, so uh, William Daughtry asks, is this meant for consumer or? or both. So if you're running the UDM or you just want like a simple mesh point, this is going to work for you. So um, let's see what's happening here. So, all right, we're going to flip over to my web browser. Let me uh, zoom in just a little bit. So check this out. It it showed up automatically. This is my UDM. And by the way, I am connecting directly to the UDM uh, here this morning, and you can connect directly to your UDM from outside by doing a WAN local uh, 8443. Uh, it will prompt for 2FA, which is fantastic. It uses your UI, your Ubiquity um, single sign-on username and password that you used when you set up your UDM, um, and then it'll also force that two-factor authentication. So here is the Unify AP uh, Beacon HD no clients because it's not adopted. So we're going to click adopt and it is in the process of adopting. Let's see what happens. So I'm watching it over here and it's still, it's still just a, uh, a solid, it's still just a solid white for the moment. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, has not turned blue yet. So I'm assuming that there's some sort of negotiation uh, happening here. The, the, the Beacon HD, which, by the way, have you deployed any of these Beacon HDs? No, no. I have a lot of Ubiquity out there, but I haven't deployed any of the, be the Beacon HDs. So um, uh, this is something new to me. When did these come out? Uh, they've been out uh, for a little while now, but uh, it is finally adopted. So um, we can see over here in the console uh, that it took about 14 minutes for that adoption to happen. So if you're wondering how long that took, Barry. That was about 14 minutes. So I'm going to click, I'm going to click the upgrade uh, button and we'll see how long it takes to upgrade the firmware. But uh, let's check it out real quick. So you can see it's blue. It's adopted blue. That's fantastic. So real quick, before we get into anything else, let's head back over to our Unify controller here. And we'll take a look at what options we have for the Unify AP Beacon HD. So if we pull it up, we can see it's the same as every other device. It gives us the MAC address, the model. We're on .80 now. Board revision is 19. We've got uh, no clients attached to it at the moment. Here's the IP address that it got from our UDM. Uh, wireless uplink. You can see that the uplink AP is Willie's UDM base. It's got a negative 53 or a 92% signal, and this is... 
uh, pretty much perfect. Um, you can see the transmit rate is 570, receive is 1.17. I would challenge this. We will get less than half of that each way, I'm sure. Um, we've got uh, N, B, and G radios here. We've got our AC radios here. And then um, you can see that um, we've got our SSIDs of what the, what the, what the Wi-Fi and uh, blah there. We've got no clients. Let's see what kind of configuration options we have. So we're going to give this a uh, we'll give this a different alias, and we're going to call it uh, the Beacon. Pretty original. I like that. So you can see it changed the name over here under device name. So with the UDM stuff, it uh, it names it, but it also if the device is unnamed, it doesn't display the uh, MAC address over here, which is really nice. All right, under configuration, you can see everything is auto, auto, auto. So back to um, the beacon. So um, you can see our WLAN. So we've got blah and what the, what the Wi-Fi. Services, we can change the management VLAN. I'm not interested in that. Network is configured via DHCP. We can do band steering. So we can tell it to prefer 5 gigahertz for the uh, clients. Um, we've got our wireless uplinks, so manually configure the uplink priorities. We are not going to do that. Everything seems to be working good. Under uh, manage device, we've got custom upgrade, force provision, disable the device, forget the device, de download device info. So download device runtime information from the controller. That's nice. Under tools, we have our debug uh, terminal, which, by the way, if you've ever seen me, um, oh, this was interesting. Let me show you this. So that popped up. That's uh, pretty cool. We're going to allow access. And so now we'll see if we can get a, uh, a terminal on this. Syncing with device. Let me zoom out for just a second here. Connection error. Let's try this again now that I've added the exception in the firewall. Syncing with device. It, it, I may have to completely disable the firewall for this to work. But this is why if your Ubiquiti controller is exposed to the Internet, uh, you should have it joined to your Ubiquity, your UI account, and it should, um, it, you should have two-factor authentication enabled because if I get inside your controller via the web, I can get inside of every one of these devices that has a terminal. Now, this one doesn't have it, uh, but I can get inside of every single one of these that has a terminal, and I can do, basically, I have a command line and open access to your, to your network. So make sure that you're using two-factor authentication uh, with your, your Unify stuff.